Seminars. My name is Lauren Brown, I'm founder of Healthy Seminars, and a uh, big thank you to our moderators, Sandra Grassa and Lorianne Slaunwhite as well, also behind the scenes tech. We're going to listen to a lecture by Dr. Leon Hammer that we recorded in 2016 um, for the Integrated Fertility Symposium. And we're doing what's called a live replay. And uh, unfortunately he wasn't able to make it today. I did send him an email because sometimes when we do these live replays, we have the speaker come and do a, um, a Q and A with us. But because we got the Integrated Fertility Symposium starting officially on May 1st, it's gonna run for two months for May and June online. Um, we just started going through some of our archives and started to pull out some talks to play in April and maybe some bonus lectures in the IFS. So this was one of the ones that uh, a lot of us loved and people really enjoyed it. So we thought it would be a great replay. I want to do a little housekeeping, just to let you know, because some of you are new. If you're new here, say hi in the chat room. Some of you have been coming forever and, and we thank for you to keep coming as part of our community. This is what we're calling a community lecture. It's part of our community unity and unity lecture series that we started in March of 2020. And that was when COVID came around and caused us to go into isolation physically and we couldn't travel and in our clinics, a lot of our clinics closed. So we started in March of 2020 doing these community immunity, uh, unity immunity lectures. And we invited people to come on with cameras on. Usually people on these webinars with cameras off. We started the, let's get all of our cameras on so we could see each other. So we're physical distancing, but we can socially um, connect with each other with our cameras on. And then at the end, we can have our mics on for questions and, and connection as well. So that's what this is a continuation of. I wanna let you know a few things that are happening in our community uh, this month of April and May. So if you scroll down on the resource page, I'll, I'll pop up here again. So on the resource page, um, you'll see there's resources here. So if you scroll down, there is a calendar of events and wow, is April ever packed, right? And so usually during the week is when we have the free community lectures. And then usually on the weekends are more in depth courses that are approved for CU, PDAs and CPDs. So you can see this week, we had a master DOM course on for long haulers, we had Ross Rosen, who's a student of Leon Hammer, talk about patient practitioner relationship. And then today we're doing Leon Hammer's replay. And so this is where you can find those links for the Zoom links. Um, this weekend, we're going to have a CU course by Ross Rosen on COVID issues. And then we have a Master Dawn course on menstrual uh, conditions as well um, uh, this weekend for CUs. And then during the week, we can see more stuff on the fertility um, for those who like fertility, I just want to let you know that on the 22nd of April, we have a free lecture, um, acupuncture and herbal treatment for PCOS miscarriages and implantation failure. And then on the 28th, we have nourish the soil, maximizing egg and sperm quality. These are all under an hour. And then on the 30th, we have um, understanding endometriosis from an east-west approach. So we got a few theme things happening around fertility during the month of April. And if you scroll down the page, you can kind of see what's going on for these free lectures, what they're about. Sally Rappaport is going to do an herbal talk on the long haulers um, next week. We have a mentorship with Yvonne Farrell, so you can check that out. And then we have the Integrated Fertility Symposium. And so, oh, this is one of the free talks. This is the free talk next week with Fiona McCulloch and Dr. Ursula Ritz. And then we got one with Paul Magarelli and Olivia Poye. And then we got the Integrated Fertility Symposium. So the resource page is a really good place to find out what's happening, you know, what kind of events we have, because we got a lot. And for those that came last week, I told you to keep checking the page because you may have noticed that we added four free talks since we did this last week, early last week, around, uh, yeah, on the 5th. Since the 5th, we've added four free talks for the month of April, and we got a whole bunch we plan to add for the month of May. I want to let you know that we have the Integrated Fertility Symposium happening. Um, it's online. It's going to run for um, all of May and June. We're actually going to start dropping lectures next week. So we can actually, if those that are already registered, we'll be able to start to watch some lectures next week. We priced it really affordable. It's $350 US for up to 36 hours of CEU PDAs. Um, and that early bird ends April 25th. If these were available on healthy seminars for on demand, we average about 25 US dollars per CU. So these 36 hours would cost um, about 897. So we've really wanted to make it affordable for you, 36 hours. I don't think anybody's priced it that way for the conferences that are happening. So we really wanted to make that happen. We made it six months long. 
there are forums in this conference because it's six months. So there's going to be opportunity to connect with each other and have discussions about lectures and case studies. So that will be happening. We're going to have some replays. So I just kind of take you to the conference calendar. Those 36 hours are going to be available on demand. Just so you know, you can watch them on your schedule during all of May and June. And plus, some of them are going to have replays. So just let you know, these this isn't just what's happening at the IFS. These are just the replays we have currently scheduled, meaning we're going to take a recording, play it together like we are today so we can be together, and the speaker is there. So then we get to interact with the speaker and, and discuss at the end of the replay. Plus, those courses are also available on demand, so you don't need to come to the live replay. And then during the week, we're going to have more panels, Q&A, and other talks that are going to happen throughout the month of May. So this is all that we've put in the calendar, because remember, they're all available on demand. And there are forms to have discussions and um, you should check out who our speakers are and you should check out the lectures. Um, one other thing that we've done that we're really excited about is majority of the speakers have created public talks. So you have the professional talk that's part of the IFS and then we've invited them, which they've done to create 10 to 15 minute lectures for the public. The purpose is, I wanted to really help inspire the public to come to you for integrative care. And I understand that it's not gonna be the insurance company, it's not gonna be the government that's gonna tell them to come see you. Remember when Fauci said, we're gonna follow the science after Trump said, um, don't drink bleach and Fauci says, we're gonna follow the science. I heard science means is synonymous with pharmaceuticals. And so I really think what we do may be, be dismissed as pseudoscience or not real. And we really are going to be the ones that are going to have to educate the public and inspire them to see us. So a lot of our speakers this year are both MD and TCM trained and or they're MDs, IVF specialists that really embrace integration. So they have the credibility factor and they've created a lecture. So after you watch the, the professional talk on the IFS and you feel excited and you want to bring those patients into your clinic and do that integrative care, but you may not be able to articulate it like them. Well, you're going to have up to 15, 10 to 20 minute videos created by these doctors that you can share on your website, that you can share on social media, on Instagram, with the idea of inspiring them to come see you for integrative care. We also have our speakers this year creating, um, 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 they've created sponsored lectures. So rather than just being sponsors, they had to come up with really good educational materials. So I'm just going to give an example of two here. So for example, in Theralogix, Here's a great talk that's already available on the sponsor page. If you go to the sponsor page on IFS, they have under a 30 minute lecture where they talk about CoQ10 and A quality and why the whole mechanism, the most recent research with CoQ10. Then they compare ubiquinone and ubiquinol, why, which one to use or not use. And they talk about the delivery system, how you're gonna get the best absorption. And they also have one on PCOS and they're gonna add another talk on there. So those are all available to anybody, whether, you, whether you're part of the IFS or not. And then another example here is I just watched this one last night because it came in. Fairhaven um, got a urologist to talk about research in antioxidant therapy. And they go into the research and the latest research and, the, and really cool RCT double blind research of how this is affecting male factor uh, fertility. So those are all available on the sponsor pages. And we'll be adding um, more of their lectures throughout um, April and May. So they've come together and created good content for you. Not available for CUs, but definitely available for you to check things out. Um, and so I just want to let you know that's the IFS. Um, again, early bird registration ends on April 25th. For acupuncturists, up to 36 hours of continued education credits. And for naturopaths, up to 30, 30 hours. One last thing, if you're wondering, am I approved? Is it approved for me? Usually the course page will have something listed on it. So if I go to this one by Dr. Ursula Ritz, We've kind of put the acupuncture CUs available for you and the naturopathic CUs available for you. So hopefully that will help you out. Um, and I want to let you know that uh, Leon Hammer in our community unity um, library where we put our archives, if you go to your my account, here's where you can find IFS, here you can find it here. But on our community page, Leon Hammer actually has a whole bunch of other talks besides this one, if this interests you. So we have several talks by Leon Hammer, if you're a fan of Leon, and that is through the community library. So what you're about to watch is a lecture that we recorded in 2016 with Leon. And um, it's about 
a, a, an hour and 20 minutes. So you're going to see a younger version of me um, talking to Leon in 2016. And he's created an incredible document. It's over 40 pages, handouts. The recording and the handouts will only be available for those that are part of the IFS. It's part of the bonus material. So if you register for the IFS, this recording and the handouts will be part of the IFS material for you. And if you have a subscription to our community library, we only put recordings there. There are no handouts, but you have the recording that you can listen over and over again. For this talk, these handouts are pretty amazing. It's like a book and I uh, highly encourage you if you're part of the IFS to go in and check out those handouts because they're just fantastic. All right, let's bring up the recording. Um, and at the end of the talk, we can get together and connect a little bit and uh, enjoy this lecture by Dr. Leon Hammer. <laughs> I want to welcome everybody. Um, today, I'm your host, your moderator, Dr. Lauren Brown. I'm a practitioner of Chinese medicine. I have my practice in Vancouver, British Columbia, a practice called Acubalance Wellness Center. And I'm your co-chair for the Integrative Fertility Symposium. And we have with us today, Dr. Leon Hammer. And, uh, and I will give him an official introduction, but um, Leon and I have been um, back and forth over the last couple of years through email, phone calls, um, just having great conversations about Chinese medicine and health and well, health and, and, um, and well-being. And um, over the time I was sharing with uh, Dr. Hammer about this fertility symposium that I was organizing, I really wanted him to attend and be one of our speakers. But he said at his young age of early 90s, flying from the East Coast to Vancouver, British Columbia, probably wasn't in his best interest. And over time, as I said, I wore him down or I coerced him to, uh, to prepare something for the symposium, which is what this interview is about. And I said to prepare a little something. And <laughs> what I ended up receiving from Dr. Hammer, he's such a, pro a prolific writer, is a 41-page document. So... Um, he didn't just write a little something, he prepared something uh, very comprehensive and very useful for the profession of Chinese medicine, which will allow us to support these men and women who are trying to conceive. I'd like to give you a little bit of background on, on Dr. Hammer. Many of you may know of him um, from his textbooks he's written. Um, one of his earlier ones, more famous ones, is Pulse Diagnosis, a uh, Contemporary Approach. Um, he's written a, a lovely book on the relationship between the practitioner and the patient, and one of his more recent textbooks is Herbal Medicine, the Formulas of Dr. John, a John H. F. Shen, one of his, his mentors. Leon founded the Dragon Rises College, and that website is dragonrises.edu. It's, it's, a, it's a great Chinese medicine school where the practitioners come out with incredible clinical um, knowledge and masters of pulse, and his school um, continues to be uh, um, one of the leaders in training Chinese medicine practitioners. And so if you want to be trained in the style of Chinese medicine that Leon will be sharing today, and if you go to his website, dragonrises.edu, and look at the articles, he has trained excellent practitioner teachers to carry on this tradition. So again, I wanted to give a shout out, shout out to the Dragon Rises College. And again, that website is dragonrises.edu. So if you have not heard of Dr. Leon Hammer before, which it's possible, but, but doubtful, I thought I would give um, an official introduction. Dr. Leon Hammer is both a Chinese medicine practitioner and a medical doctor. He's a graduate of Cornell University um, from Cornell Medical College and the William A. White Institute of Psychoanalysis and Psychiatry. Since 1971, that's probably before many of you were born, um, he practiced psychiatry and psychoanalysis directed a child uh, guidance clinic and drug abuse councils on the southeast shore of Long Island. He taught at the Adelphi University and was psychiatric consultant and associate professor at Southampton College in Southampton, New York. After working with Fitz Pearls and Gestalt Therapy for three years and with Alexander Lowen in bioenergetics over a period of eight years, he began a study of Chinese medicine. He studied in England with J.D. Van Buren during the 1970s, and then he traveled to study in China in the 1980s uh, 1980s. Dr. Hammer studied with the internationally acknowledged Chinese master, Dr. John H. F. Shen, over a period of 27 years. And as I mentioned, 
Um, he's produced a textbook on the Chinese herbal formulas from jo Dr. John Shen. Dr. Hammers practiced Chinese medicine from 1973 to 1990. He continues to do consultations for practitioners. He's the author of Dragon Rises, Red Bird Flies, and a study of the study of relationships of Chinese medicine and Western psychology. His second book was Chinese Pulse Diagnosis, A Contemporary Approach. And his third book is called The Patient-Practitioner Relationship in Acupuncture. And then his fourth is The Herbal um, Formulas with Dr. John H.F. Dr. Hammers taught workshops in various aspects of Chinese medicine, especially pulse diagnosis throughout the world. In April 2001, Dr. Hammer helped found the Dragon Rises College of Oriental Medicine in Gainesville, Florida. He's chairman of the board, provides guidance and direction, and he is still um, does some teaching as a, as a faculty member to practitioners to continue, continue on this lineage. This college has a strong focus on diagnosis, which is uh, especially contemporary Chinese pulse and asking diagnosis, and its curriculum, Contemporary Oriental Medicine, emphasizes psychology and integrates aspects of various models, including TCM and five elements, into its unique work. Unfortunately, Dr. Hammer is restricting his travels, but because we have the technology today, we're able to have this interview with him. And I want to again thank you, Dr. Hammer, um, for finally um, <laughs> succeeding to my wishes and doing this interview and writing this article. You know, Dr. Hammer had said, I'm not a specialist in infertility. Why do you want me to write this, you know, and, and do this interview? And I said, but you're a master of Chinese medicine and an excellent Chinese medicine practitioner can treat many diseases because we don't really treat the disease, we treat the pattern. And I also know his mentor, Dr. John Shen, had treated some women for infertility. And I just thought it would be beautiful and beneficial to the profession to hear your words of wisdom. Um, Dr. Hammer, do you have anything you want to add to the kind of the, the introduction to our interview of your background with treating fertility and, and how you put together the, the paper for us um, on treating infertility? Well, in answer to that question, you have just given the whole speech and I can <laughs> retire now. But essentially, I, 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 um, I can speak volubly on this subject because uh, one can speak volubly about things one knows the least about. And so one can go on and on and on. And uh, what I wanted to start out to say is that uh, in terms of the entertainment value of what follows, uh, this depends on the contest between me and my memory. And uh, uh, whether or not uh, you will be observing an astute observer of uh, the medicine or uh, a geriatric sit-down comedian. And so I can never predict which <laughs> it's going to be. And, and at any rate, um, in terms of my background, in, in terms of what's uh, relevant here to talk about, um, as uh, Lauren has already mentioned, I was a psychiatrist, psychoanalyst. And the passage from the psychiatric practice to uh, the Chinese medical practice was essentially seamless. People keep asking me about that. And really was based on an epiphany. Uh, briefly, I always wanted to be a physician. I tried different uh, types of medicine, and uh, as I mentioned, psychiatry. And, but I was never completely satisfied. And I ended up in England in 1971. Somebody whispered in my ear that they were studying acupuncture. It was a big secret at that time. You didn't tell everybody. Uh, and, you know, that, that kind of uh, sensitive information about yourself. And I simply stepped into Dr. Van Buren's office, put my foot in, and knew that this is what I meant uh, really most of my life when I said I wanted to be a doctor. So uh, since that time, I've been extraordinarily happy. And uh, I love the medicine. I have a passion for it. However, uh, when I began, uh, I had a full practice, 70 hours a week, uh, of psychiatric, psychoanalytic patients. And uh, rather than try, uh, it never occurred to me 
uh, to start doing something different, I, I simply continued with these same patients and uh, started using Chinese medicine. And uh, it was miraculous. For at least six months, I could do no wrong. And, uh, and so it, it was a seamless transition. And people expected me, therefore, since I was a psychiatrist, to specialize in Chinese medicine and specialize in psychology, psychiatry, and uh, develop a practice of medicine that was centered around that. But instead, for whatever reason that I can't account for, uh, I did not attempt to specialize. And uh, the, uh, really, the only time that I've acceded to any request along that line and whenever I talk, people always, after I finish, ask me, uh, well, uh, where do you put the needle? So uh, I've gotten used to that. And I have, uh, just for your information, with regard to dragon rises, red bird flies, and uh, psychology and Chinese medicine, uh, on the resource part of the Eastland Press website, I have uh, added a very detailed treatment program for, uh, the infor for, for the information in that book. So I, I, I just to prove that I'm capable of doing that. But uh, I, I did not attempt to uh, specialize. And essentially what I've done is, uh, except I used in the beginning some of Dr. Duras's uh, insights. Um, I treated the people who came uh, based on the Chinese medical diagnosis, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Uh, the diagnosis of an individual with a condition. So I was very concerned about the condition, and I will explain later why I was just as or more concerned with the individual who has that condition. And that is the complete basis for which I pe treated people and treated some people with fertility. In other words, I did not treat them for fertility. Uh, it's not to say that certainly early in my practice, like the rest of us, uh, I was every time a patient came, I had an anxiety attack and ran to whatever book, and there weren't very many in those days, that I could turn, you know, and if it said fertility, do this and do that. Uh, I, I can't deny that I probably did that. And, but basically, I treated uh, fertility like I would treat any other patient. And uh, since I was not known for treating fertility, I did not have a, a great many patients who came with that diagnosis and for that purpose. But uh, what I did have were very good results. And likewise, uh, I was fortunate following this dictum of treating what, what I found diagnostically, uh, strictly in terms of Chinese medicine, rather than in terms of what the symptoms were, uh, my practice generally was uh, productive. Now the problem today, and I, as Lauren said, I uh, am heavily involved with a Chinese medical college, is that um, Chinese, Chinese medical diagnosis is complicated. And I will go into that a little bit more.